<sighs> well, I'm not particularly happy to make this video because I've been using self myofascial release techniques along with stretching on myself and my clients for the past five years now. And after researching this nonstop for the last few weeks, looking at it and comparing literally dozens of studies, uh, I was wrong about self myofascial release and stretching. It is literally mostly bullshit. Well, at least the claims that a lot of people have about it and what you're actually doing to your body while you're doing it. Uh, and chances are, if I was doing it incorrectly for years now, so have you. So la hissen up. I'm gonna debunk some common myths about self myofascial release and stretching based on current research and offer a solution to actually use foam rollers and other equipment properly without just letting it take up space in the gym. They can still be effective, just not as effective as you might think. Okay, let's dive right in. Think for a second what you've been told about stretching. Oh, you're lengthening the muscles so you can get into those positions easier. You do this for a long period of time, your muscles will be able to stretch more and you'll be able to be more flexible. Uh, okay. Now think for a second what you've been told about foam rolling. I know for myself, I've heard things like, oh, you're breaking up scar tissue and you're increasing blood flow, releasing adhesions. Uh, the common thinking in the fitness realm is that foam rolling rehydrates fascia and creates a fluid gel-like extracellular environment to provide greater increase in range of motion. By doing foam rolling or doing self myofascial release on the fascia, you're remodeling the collagen in those areas and making it less tight and more mobile. Along with that, it has been suggested that SMR in practice can be just as effective, uh, if not more effective than stretching to improve range of motion. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time foam rolling or stretching. I wanna do the least amount possible to yield the best results to prevent injury and improve performance. So I can focus more on the fun stuff, like, you know, making my muscles cry in agony in order to build them up or let my dieting and macro tracking run my everyday life and ruin every single relationship I've ever had. Or let my body and looks completely control how happy I am. So because I don't want to waste 30 plus minutes in the gym doing stretching and foam rolling, I kind of want to know which is better, stretching or foam rolling. Believe it or not, there's only a a handful of few legitimate studies that actually measure the long-term benefits of foam rolling versus the long-term benefits of stretching. Junker and Stoggle 2015 is one such study where an attempt to improve hamstring flexibility, 47 men aged 19 to 47 were put into two different groups. A foam rolling group was compared to a PNF stretching group where each would stretch two to three times per week on a specifically designed program. At the end of the four weeks, uh, both groups showed equal levels of improvement. This is really the only legit study I was able to find that actually compared static stretching to foam rolling. All other studies were trying to actually see the effectiveness of foam rolling in addition to static stretching. And this study is actually the only one that I found that measures the long-term effects rather than the acute, which is just immediate, uh, effects of stretching or foam rolling. See, unfortunately, that's the problem that I have with foam rolling after doing all of this research. There's no promising evidence that foam rolling has any long-term benefits at all. And, and not just foam rolling, any kind of self myofascial release or, or even stretching as a whole. Believe it or not, the common consensus among the scientific literature is that stretching actually fails to lengthen the muscles over a long period of time. Uh, multiple studies show that regular stretching over six to eight weeks produce absolutely zero change at all. So now you might be asking yourself, but Kevin, that study that you just talked about clearly proves that you're wrong. Stretching clearly has an effect on the body. They had some level of improvement. Although there ended up being some improvement between both of those groups, I'm not really convinced that any of the improvements were actually physiological. And, and, and here's why. So at the beginning and end of this study, the subjects performed a stand and reach test, which measures both uh, low back and hamstring flexibility. Um, I simply just don't trust this method. I mean, you could easily round your back to increase your reach. But hey, you know what? I'll give this study the benefit of the doubt that they did everything correctly in terms of testing. But it makes sense if you really think about it, why they were able to reach further on the second testing. Think about foam rolling, think about PNF stretching. 
When you first started, they're both pretty painful, right? And mind you, this study was done on people who have never foam rolled before and never followed a stretching program. The first time they tried the stand and reach test, it was probably pretty painful. Uh, the first few times they foam rolled or stretched, painful. Uh, after doing this for four weeks and trying it again, it's not gonna hurt as much. They're going to be able to reach deeper without feeling like their hammies are just gonna freaking explode out of the back of their leg. So for those reasons, I'm really skeptical of this study and, and unfortunately there aren't really a whole lot of studies out there showing the long-term differences when it comes to foam rolling or stretching. Uh, there is one exception, Chan and colleagues showed that eight weeks of static stretching increased muscle extensibility. However, the vast majority of studies uh, comparing static stretching or foam rolling or any of those things uh, show an increase in range of motion due to an increase in the stretch tolerance, not necessarily the extensibility. So in other words, you're just getting tougher. You're able to withstand the pain of stretching more so than anything actually happening to your body. So is this it then? Is it just all in my mind? Have I been lied to this whole time and this... This placebo effect that I had is now ruined because I clicked on your stupid video! Yep, sorry to ruin your day, but that's all there is to it. It's all in your mind. So don't stretch or foam roll ever again. Just try to resell your copy of Becoming a Supple Leopard, all of your bands, and all your foam rollers, and whatever else you might have. And try to get a refund because you pretty much just wasted your money and your time. So, uh, yeah, best of luck to you, and see you in the next video. Listen, there's actually still a way to incorporate stretching and foam rolling to your benefit. You didn't just think I was gonna drop this bomb on you that stretching is a lie and not offer some kind of solution, right? God damn. Who do you think I am? Although when it comes to long-term benefits, stretching shows no definitive uh, evidence for actually helping, nothing is ever set in stone, and even if the current scientific literature doesn't support it, a super more in-depth study could come out one day showing that it actually is effective. Who knows? Um, I'm not really gonna bank on that. However, there are plenty of studies that show significant acute improvements in range of motion when using foam rolling and stretching in conjunction with one another. So yes, they're not a complete waste of time and energy. You just need to be strategic on how and when you use them. Okay, so let's get down to how you should stretch and use SMR based on current research on the topic. Now, before I dive into it, I'm just going to warn you, I'm gonna be throwing a lot of different studies at you, but uh, I'm just gonna get into the gist of each of them rather than go into the details to prevent this video from being like an hour long. If you wanna look at these studies in detail, I'll include them in the description below the video. Really, the only research that shows that SMR and stretching has any kind of carryover to your workouts are if they're done pre or mid-workout. Halpern et al. 2014 conducted a study based on SMR and static stretching with ankle range of motion. The research concluded that both increased range of motion, however, SMR didn't have an effect on force output like static stretching did if done over 30 seconds. This is important to note because I'm sure many of you have been told the, uh, oh, static stretching is bad before workout. Uh, yes, that's true, kind of. Extended periods of static stretching has been shown to consistently decrease performance, but this usually happens when max effort exercises are done immediately afterward. There's actually more evidence that static stretching done under 30 seconds can improve range of motion without affecting performance. Also, according to a few studies, the greatest change in range of motion with the static stretch actually occurs between 15 and 30 seconds. So there's not really much of a need to do it much longer than that anyway. Now, based on this, I'm going to make the argument that this Despite what you've been told, the science actually points to the fact that doing some static stretching pre-workout not only doesn't affect performance in a negative way, but actually enhances performance. My favorite study while researching proves this, and this is a recent 2016 study of Division I female athletes from Kent State that show short bouts of static stretching before doing working sets of 80% of 1RM squats not only increased range of motion, but also didn't affect performance compared to a group that had no warm up at all. In this study, one group did seven minutes of short bouts of static stretching, and another group, <laughs> another group just read the newspaper. Uh, that's weird. Uh, anyway, so no differences in strength were shown, but the static stretching group actually showed a significantly improved range of motion in the squat compared to the group that did not. Here is a direct excerpt from the study. Each subject's 1RM back squat was assessed during the first day of testing and verified during the second. On the third testing day, subjects assigned to the 
uh, SC held three lower body stretches twice for 30 second intervals and those assigned to the CC rested during the corresponding seven minutes and 50 second time period. The subjects also performed a fatiguing squat protocol consisting of four sets of maximum repetitions on the third day of testing. A significant interaction was noted for flexibility. No significant interaction was observed between the FI of the CC or the SC. These results indicate that static stretching does not have a significant effect on multiple sets of the back squat. Therefore, coaches may allow their athletes to engage in static stretching prior to resistance ad libitum. That is pretty freaking awesome. So pretty much what you've been told about static stretching is a lie. Most trainers, myself included, until recently tell their clients to static stretch after a workout. According to the research, which is very convincing, you should do exactly the opposite, as long as it's not done for more than 30 seconds at a time. That's great and all, but where does foam rolling come into play? Is it completely pointless? Yo, chill, dude, I'm getting to that. I'm going to reference the Halper et al. study I provided earlier again. It doesn't seem that foam rolling for moderate amounts of time affects performance immediately afterward, like long periods of static stretching, which definitely do. On top of that, McDonald et al., where two one minute bouts of SMR on the quads were performed, was found to be very effective in increasing flexibility and range of motion for the next two minutes. So it seems that foam rolling is effective in improving range of motion in a short amount of time without affecting performance. Uh, the actual reason for this is unknown because like we talked about earlier, the claim that the tissues themselves actually change in any way is pretty much uh, fake news. However, it has been theorized that something called the Golgi tendon organ, which helps the body identify muscular tension, plays a role in foam rolling possibly being effective. This is done by a process known as autogenic inhibition, in which the organ sends a signal to the brain to relax the muscles so that it does not tear. This happens when the GTO senses that a tissue is being stretched too fast or too far in order to avoid soft tissue injury. It's been speculated that sustained pressure causes excitation of the mechanoreceptors of the nervous system, most notably the Golgi tendon organ to relax the tight muscles, rather than any tissue changes actually occurring. Uh, this is the most solid theory out there in my opinion, but it hasn't been proven, so don't take it as 100% truth. I know like 99% of you right now don't actually care what happens, you just wanna know what, how to use foam rolling the right way without wasting your time. I <laughs> I just thought it was interesting and I just wanted to share it with you guys. God. Now there's more studies than I can count that show that although foam rolling and static stretching alone can temporarily increase range of motion, combining the two yields even greater results. So that being the case, combining foam rolling, static stretching, and even a little bit of dynamic stretching at the beginning of a workout will yield the greatest range of motion improvement. Uh, I know I didn't go into dynamic stretching too much in this video, but from what I know about it, uh, it's not necessarily any more effective than static stretching or foam rolling. However, I do still like it a lot, and I still like to do it a little bit. I like things like uh, windmills in between sets of squats, for example, I usually do. So now with all this info covered in this video so far, let's put it all together on the best way to warm up before exercising. According to all my research, this is how I've personally been doing my warm ups now to great effect. I like to start with short bouts of static stretching followed by some foam rolling uh, before I start my workouts followed by a little bit of dynamic stretching based on the movement that I'm doing for that day. Uh, such as for squats, I would do a banded squat routine. Uh, then between sets, I would perform some foam rolling. As shown by McDonald et al, where again, two one minute bouts of SMR on the quads was found to be very effective in increasing flexibility for the next two minutes. The benefits of foam rolling seem to not last too long. For squats, for example, I like to foam roll my IT band and quads for about like 30 seconds each or so, followed by a one to two minute break, then starting the next set. Uh, this is also why I don't do foam rolling, only foam rolling itself as a warm up. Static stretching has been shown to last a longer period of time uh, in terms of its effects than just foam rolling. Based on all the studies I mentioned before, I don't like to keep my initial warm up too long. 
honestly nothing longer than like five minutes and I like to foam roll and dynamic stretch intuitively in between sets. Uh, I can't explain to you how important it is to film your working sets. You might be thinking that you go and ask the grass on squats, but the video could tell a whole different story. So I like to make sure that range of motion isn't an issue, but sometimes for some reason it is, and in those cases I like to foam roll a little bit extra between sets, maybe even do some light static stretching. Uh, if I see the next set looks a little better and feels better, um, and, and looks better on camera, uh, I'll repeat the routine within that session. I've noticed for myself that it can vary from session to session. Uh, sometimes it seems like my hamstrings are too immobile or, or whatever, or my hips or my ankles are all the above. So that leads me to my final point. Flexibility, mobility, effectiveness, and carryover are all subjective and will be different from individual to individual. That's why it's important to make sure you know what to look out for when you sense any kind of lack of mobility uh, within exercises. Okay, now on to my final conclusion. Foam rolling and stretching are great and still have their place. It's just that most people don't do it correctly or optimally. Based on the current research, there's no long-term benefit to doing these other than you increasing your tolerance to being in a stretched state. There is, however, strong evidence, uh, almost conclusive evidence, I should say, that it does increase range of motion temporarily when done before exercising. Uh, but here's the thing, though, you they're still not necessary. And that's up to, you know, if you want to spend your time doing it or not. I know plenty of people that don't do any kind of foam rolling or any kind of stretching and they're perfectly fine. Uh, they just warm up through the exercise. So doing like an extended squat warm up, uh, holding like a deep pause with the barbell at the bottom if you're doing a, uh, if you're squatting that day, I mean, that could work too. This part is honestly optional. It's not completely necessary. Although personally for myself, I found that they help a little bit more. Um, I, I kind of just like foam rolling. I like how it feels, I like how stretching feels, so I still like to incorporate a little bit, but it's still unnecessary. Um, but it can help, but like I said, actually doing the warm up or warming up with the exercise that you're doing for that day in a specific way can be just as effective. So it's all up to personal interpretation. So if you like foam rolling, if you like stretching, great, keep doing it. Just make sure that you do it at the beginning of your workout and not after. If you do it after, it's not gonna hurt you, but you're just kind of wasting your time and nothing's really happening. It's all in your head. Just a placebo effect. At least as far as our current scientific, scientific literature uh, suggests. Uh, other than that, you don't really need to do it. It's just up to you if you wanna do it. I personally do some, but not a ton. And uh, yeah, just don't do it so much that you're wasting your time in your gym and it's taking away from the workouts. Because keep in mind, you're expending energy while you're foam rolling and stretching. It might not be a ton, but it can still uh, take away from your workout, which is where the actual gains are being made. So yeah, that's all I gotta say on the topic. It only took me like 30 minutes or however long this video ends up being <laughs> to explain it, but I hope you found it informative. I hope I didn't like completely blow your mind and destroy your world. Um, yeah, that's it. Have a great rest of your day or night. Uh, I will be making videos like this again um, in the future. Uh, I like to try to consistently post about once a week. Um, I definitely do that at least once a week. And uh, you know, these videos take a long time to make, okay? Long time, a lot of research as you can tell. Uh, I really don't ask for anything in return other than just like freaking just subscribe, please. I'm trying to grow this channel and I really like making videos. I love this stuff and um, I kind of want to be rewarded for it in a sense. So I think it's fair. So subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button so that you're notified of future videos. That'll help me out a ton in the future. Share this video if you think it's going to be interesting and help uh, people out that you know. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye.